It is officially playoff time on special edition as the Cowboys get ready for their wild card weekend matchup with the Green Bay Packers. The Cowboys are champions of the NFC East and will host the Packers Sunday at 330 Central Time alongside Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback, Nate Newton. I'm Kyle Yeomans. We've got a different look up here. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We've got the jerseys. Got big number 8642. And then, of course, you got to love the 61. Mm -hmm. I didn't play, so I've just got the Cowboys playoff T-shirt. Little C's everything. There it is. Carpe Omnio, oh, yeah. which has been the rally cry for this team all year long. But, gentlemen, I'll start with you, Barry. What is your confidence level going into the postseason? My confidence level is extremely high when you talk about the Dallas Cowboys. And that's because they have, in my opinion, the best quarterback in all of playoffs right now, and that's Dak Prescott. And we understand and if you have that position solidified, then your team will always have an opportunity to win. Yeah, my confidence is high as well. It's mainly because of how this team has been playing as of late and also the schedule that they have ahead of them. They get their first game at home. They get to play against an opponent that I would have picked for them in terms of having the advantage. And I think that what they do well, Green Bay doesn't. Mine is off the charts. We get high <laughs> off the charts. Right? The Richter scale is about to blow, baby. These Cowboys are ready. They're prepped. They've been highs and lows through the whole season. Let's go, Cowboys. There you go. Hopefully, the confidence levels like that from the coaching staff led by Mike McCarthy. Third straight year of 12 wins in the regular season. Here's what he had to say about heading into the playoffs this week. Last year, I thought it was important for me to, to talk about um, – you know, uh, Green Bay in the beginning of the week, I did with the team. Uh, I regretted it. Uh, I don't think that's that, that, that doesn't even need to come into into our energy base. So um, you live and learn. You know, th this game's about our commitment. It doesn't matter who we're playing. It really doesn't. At the end of the day, this is my team. You know, I'm a Dallas Cowboy, and this is our our opportunity. And I just want to make sure I'm doing my part, and that's pouring everything into winning this game. So Mike McCarthy doesn't want to have the conversation of Mike McCarthy versus the Packers. It is Cowboys Packers. Do you like the way that they're attacking this playoff and the mindset that they have moving forward? Oh, yeah, I love this mindset they have going forward. And Mike McCarthy, to me, he's going to have his troops ready to go. All right, 12-plus wins in three straight seasons, that's no easy task out there. But we understand that if you wear that star on the side of your helmet or you coach for the Dallas Cowboys, it's all about what you do in the postseason. And I believe McCarthy and these players are up for the challenge. I love the fact that he came out there and said, this is my team. You know, we're squad up going against Green Bay. It doesn't matter who's coming into our house. we got to go ahead and take care of these cats just first on the docket, them boys in green. Coach hasn't changed since day one. He's been consistent. Now he's the offensive play caller, and things have leveled out, and you know, we're doing what we need to do. Yeah, you feel like that confidence level is pretty high for this team, and it's really because they trust their coach. They trust Mike McCarthy going into this matchup. While there is a bit of history there, both with the program and with the coaches, Really, it's about football. It's about what's going to happen on the field. And when we come back, we're going to go one on one with Cowboys COO Steven Jones. He'll tell us about the matchup at hand in the wild card weekend. Special edition presented by AT&T is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Reliant, official energy provider of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com make your crypto play today and by AT&T official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys this segment is brought to you by the NFL fan of the year presented by Captain Morgan White out here at AT&T Stadium as the Cowboys prepare to take on the Green Bay Packers and seize everything in the 2023 playoff picture. Be loud, be proud, and Cowboys Nation show out in Arlington on Sunday afternoon, 3.30 kickoff. I'm already got my playoff t-shirt. It's time to seize everything for the Dallas Cowboys, and they'll look to do so behind a roster built by this Cowboys front office. Nick Eatman sits down with Cowboys COO Stephen Jones to talk about it. What's up, Cowboys Nation? It's that time. It's playoff time. We've been waiting for it, and it's finally here. I'm Nick Eatman, joined by Stephen Jones, Cowboys Chief Operating Officer. I mean, I know that the excitement's got to be through the roof right now. I just talked to you a little bit uh, off camera. It's describe the feeling of finally being at this point, this moment, with the Packers coming in this weekend. Well, that's why you're, you're in the business. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you, you go to work. Uh, you know, if you would have painted – painted it out and said this is where you're going to end up uh, winning the East and uh, 
you know, having the chance to uh, have home field advantage, and uh, which we have. And if you win that one, you can play at home again. Uh, you know, the only way it would, would have been better is to be the number one seed. But uh, this is why you do it. And certainly, uh, you know, Dak uh, has led the way here. Yes. Uh, having an MVP type season. In my mind, he is the MVP. Uh, but uh, he's just played off the charts. He's done everything he said he'd do. He got rid of the, the interceptions. I think he's uh, he tracked uh, below even what he projected. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's just played at a high level and brought the team along with him. And uh, obviously, uh, we've had a lot of players play at a very high level from C.D. Lamb uh, to Micah Parsons, Jake Ferguson. That offensive line group uh, has gotten to play together. Uh, a lot this year, a lot more than in the past. Uh, they'll be ready to roll uh, Sunday. Uh, certainly we're in, you know, overall good health. Uh, you know, I, I even think Stefan's going to be able to make it back and uh, Tyler Smith's ready to go. So uh, we're in great shape. This is why you do it. We've been playing our best football at home uh, in terms of uh, AT&T Stadium and uh, look forward to it. Well, you're in playoff mode right now because I was going to ask you about Gilmore, ask you about the line, ask you about 8-0 at right. home, ask you about everything. And you, you're already you're covering all the bases there. I do want to talk about C.D. Lamb. You, you mentioned him. You, you, the connection, Irvin and, and, and Aikman had that connection. This feels very similar with Dak and C.D. I mean, even on Sunday, 13 targets, 13 catches. They're just, it seemed like in unison right now. Well, C.D. came in early in the season uh, and had a visit with Mike and said, I don't want to be one of those prima donna guys. Uh, you know, receivers asking for the ball, but I do think, uh, you know, I should get the ball, that I can really help our team. And uh, uh, turns out he was right. right. And uh, the focus has gone to him throwing it. Uh, him, him and uh, Dak just have an amazing connection. Obviously, he's had one of the all-time years uh, as a receiver in the NFL, uh, playing at an all-pro level. Uh, uh, in my mind, playing probably as good as any receiver in the game. And, uh, you know, just doing a great job in terms of uh, uh, being productive and, and helping the Cowboys win football games. And certainly Dak has a tremendous amount of confidence in him. And, uh, you know, the great news is with that offensive line protecting Dak, if, uh, you know, if they, if they start focusing too much on CD, we've got a group of, of men uh, opposite of CD, whether it's a Jake Ferguson, whether it's a Cooks, whether it's a Tony Pollard, a Michael Gallup. Uh, we've got other weapons, uh, you know, to go at them with. So uh, it's a great group. Uh, this offense, in my mind, just keeps getting better, uh, certainly playing at a very high level. And uh, look forward to uh, them executing. I mean, you can feel the intensity level this week uh, is at a whole nother level. I mean, this is win or go home time. Uh, our guys work hard each and every week, but we all know playoff uh, football, playoffs in any sport uh, is a whole nother level. Stephen Jones, you can catch up with him and Nick Eatman in the entire interview on DallasCowboys.com, brought to you by Reliant. There's another chapter being written in the storied history of the Cowboys and the Packers in the postseason. The ninth all-time meeting coming up. What does the pack attack bring to the table? We talk about Green Bay next. This segment was brought to you by the NFL Fan of the Year, presented by Captain Morgan. This segment is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Eight previous playoff matchups between the Cowboys and the Packers all time split directly in half four and four. So little bragging rights on the line between two of the NFL's most historic franchises. Their first playoff meeting came all the way back in 1966. Of course, the Ice Bowl in 1967, and then they've had various meetings throughout the postseason since then. But let's talk about this 2023 meeting. Jordan Love and company have been playing some pretty good football. We're going to break down Jordan Love in a moment, so I'll start with Barry on this one. Tell me about what they've done differently with him now as the starter in Green Bay. Well, when you look at Green Bay's offense, what they've done changing as far as uh, Jordan Love's concerned, they've moved the pocket a lot. They've got him out of the pocket, let him move on his feet a little bit out there. And this guy can present problems for the Dallas Cowboys defense because he's everything that's given this defense trouble in the past. Strong, athletic quarterback with a big-time arm that can buy time for his options on the outside to get open. So, to me, this defensive line, they've got to make – I'm um, Jordan Love feel uncomfortable the entire game. C kill his confidence early in the game. So when it comes down to it, the fourth quarter, the moment will get too big for him. 
I think as the, as the season started, they depended on him a lot. They were throwing him the ball, letting him throw the ball around a lot. But these last few weeks, they've got Aaron Jones involved. So they're a little bit more uh, consistent in trying to be balanced, and, and, and it shows up. He's been really under the radar as one of the best quarterbacks in football since week 11. But Isaiah, it's not just throwing the ball. They can run it as well. They've got a two-headed monster in the backfield. Aaron Jones is one. He's torched the Cowboys a couple times in the past. And then A.J. Dillon, who's more of that bruiser. Yeah, you see the stat line right there over the past three games. This dude is catching on fire. This dude 154 yards uh, toting that rock on the ground. And not only can he tote the rock out the backfield, he can also catch it as well. They like to find him in the passing game. So obviously Aaron Jones is very familiar with the Cowboys. He's fully capable. And if they have access to A.J. Dillon, well, you bring your big boy fans. Mm. Uh, Aaron Jones does it all. He can run. He run with power. He's explosive. He can catch coming out of the backfield. And like uh, my man Isaiah said, once they get you beat up with, with, with that quickness, then they come with big A.J. Dillon. He comes straight downhill. And it feels like yesterday for Cowboys fans that it was Aaron Jones running all over oh. that 2019 defense for three touchdowns at AT&T Stadium. But there also are some weapons on the outside. We've seen some teams down the stretch, the Cowboys playing against that have weapons. Where does this team rank Barry against uh, really some of the teams that they played late in the year. You know, I don't think they're as good on the outside as a Seattle or maybe a San Francisco, but they are formidable on the outside. A group of young guys out there that are all growing together with their quarterback. They have speed out there. They can go the distance as far as hitting their head on the goalpost. But to me, the main guy, if he's able to go, and that's Christian Watson, yeah. he presents problems. We've seen him in his rookie year when we played against him up in Green Bay. He was able to get over the top of this defense. He's one of those guys where you got to know where he is at all times. Reed, Watson, Dobbs, doesn't matter. All those guys are fully capable of going out there making plays. Which makes, what makes these guys dangerous is the system that they're in. Uh, this is very similar to what the Dallas Cowboys do, and that's why the quarterback has very similar stats to what Dak Prescott has. If he has time, he's going to be able to find these guys because they run a lot of three-by-one sets, and they like to flood uh, these zones of the, of the opposing defenses. Yeah, and it feels like yesterday Christian Watson's coming out party was three touchdowns <laughs> against the Cowboys in Week 10 of last year. Hopefully Dallas can avoid that. Nate, tell me about this Packers defense. They're actually top 10 in the league in terms of defending the pass. Not so good against the run. Is this a chance for Tony Pollard and company to get after them? Oh, yes, sir. If all our offensive linemen are in place and in play this week, we should be able to run the ball with some kind of efficiency. So, but Kenny Clark, I think is his name. He's yeah. in the middle. That boy's a dog now. He's a dog, so don't overlook him, number 97. Yeah, ninth in passing yards allowed per game, but they're 28th in rushing yards allowed per mm. game. They've had four games this season where their opponent has rushed for over 200 yards. That's something that the Cowboys should try to attack. But when we come back, we're attacking the film room. Isaiah Stanback breaks down the mobility and the accuracy of one Jordan Love in his first year as the starter in Green Bay. This segment was brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Welcome back into Special Edition alongside Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Time now to take a deep dive into the All-22. This is a Cowboys matchup in the wild card round against Jordan Love and a Packers offense that's been really good over the last eight games. They finished 6-2. It's the same record the Cowboys had in their final eight games of the regular season. And they had Jordan Love, who finished with 32 touchdown passes, second to only Dak Prescott in the NFL. So, Let's take a look at what Jordan Love does well. It's his first full year as a starter. He was drafted back in 2020. What sets him apart from some of these other quarterbacks that have been waiting uh, in the wings for a playoff opportunity? Yeah, it really comes down to his decision making. This dude is a highly accurate passer who makes really sound decisions. Um, he has the capabilities physically with the attributes to be able to use his legs, but he doesn't necessarily always tend to do that. Yeah. So he wants to sit back there in the pocket. He wants to deliver a nice ball. He wants to move the chains. Um, his stats are not that much different than Dak. You know, Dak is 36 and nine this year. He's 32 and 11. So you yeah. talk, talk about their stat line. These guys are very similar, and he puts his team in a position to be successful. We're going to talk about one of the first things you have to address here is these guys do a great job of putting their receivers and their team in a position to win, okay? And the first thing these guys are doing is concepts, right? These guys are going to come over here, and they like to be in this three-man set. 
Okay, you're going to see this man come all the way in motion. He's going to work up, and he's going to work on the in route. What else is going to take place here? We're going to come up, and we're going to run a post. He's going to come up and run a corner. You see the pressure that they're putting on this man right here, okay? This safety back here in his single high safety cover three, they are really stressing him out, and they're also going to take the running back and put him into a flat. So they're really putting four guys to one side in cover three. Let's see it play out. Boom, the ball is snapped, okay? And here we are, we're off and running. Okay, again, we talked about this man coming up, stretching this backside safety, coming up, putting him. So they're really putting this guy in a deal pickle, right? This safety back here is really going to be stressed. And then what else is taking place? You're also going to run him and run him right behind the second-level defenders. And if you want to get a little nosy, they're also running Mr. <laughs> Aaron Jones out here into a flat. So they have levels. And when this man back here has time to throw the ball, he is going to be able to be able to deliver it right here into the open space in your zone. He's You cannot allow for him to sit back there because their concepts, their receivers, and their quarterback can make sure that they move the chains. Now, it's not just scheme. It's not just concept. You don't have 32 touchdown passes because your coach calls a good play. You have to have some talent Ability. in your own right. What type right. of talent does Jordan Love have? Yeah, well, we just talked about his 32 touchdowns and only 11 interceptions. Okay, again, right, right behind Dak. As good yeah. of a year as Dak's had, the MVP conversation, <laughs> this dude is right behind him in the stat line. So you got to give him some respect. But let's go ahead and talk about his ability to be able to buy time and get out of the pocket and be able to find his, his uh, targets. All right, so you guys are going to see it here. Goliath's guy going to be wearing under route concepts coming down here. Okay, you're gonna boom, 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 boom. You got all kind of stuff going on backside, but that's not where we're going. I want you guys to pay attention to this man right here, and that is the QBJ Love. See it play out real quick. Okay, you guys see it again. They're coming to here, just three man side over here. Okay, boom. Let's pause it right here. You got the three man side coming. Okay, boom, coming in here, coming in here. They like to flood the block over here. They're gonna run a shallow. They like to have guys at layers and levels. Okay, continue to play it through. All right, boom. He's in back there. He gets a little bit of pressure. Easily with his ability, he can do what? He just simply just take off and boop, and go right up the sideline here unimpeded. But I want you guys to pay attention. Pause it right there. The ball is coming out of his hand. What is he looking at right now that makes him feel as if he can throw the ball? Well, his receiver that he's looking at is all the way back here in the corner in the end zone. That man is not covered right now, but he has the trust in him that he's going to come downhill and he's going to deliver one heck of a ball right here on the sideline for a little twinkle toes and a touchdown. That is high precision. That is decision making. That is him trusting his abilities and his receiver to make that hard throw versus util utilizing his legs. That is a big time throw. That's a big time I mean, that's throw. 30 yards off balance downfield with a man covered. Dark. And you're still able to put it on a money. It's a phenomenal throw. And Jordan Love's had many of those Correct. throughout the year. But you saw that just tad bit of mobility, mm -hmm. able to run out of the pocket. How can he utilize his legs as well? Yeah, well, you just saw it right there. He had nothing but green grass in front of him. He still trusted his arm. Sure. But what happens when you apply, apply a little bit of pressure on him? Well, again, where's the man at? He's back here. Okay, these guys are going to do a great job of trying to bring pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. What they're going to try to do is fool him. They're going to try to drop this, this uh, defensive end. They're going to try to take him and drop him out here to be a spy cover. Uh, covered guy. So he's going to play through. All right, so here he goes. Okay, here comes the pressure. These guys are all coming downhill. Bow, 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 bow. We just talked about who? We talked about this defensive end now. This defensive end right here. Pause it for me. He is now becoming a spy player. His job is solely to lock in right here on Jay Love. But Jay Love notices that. These guys are in man coverage. Okay, everybody has somebody manned up. That means that there's one man left for him, and it's a defensive end. He has all the trust and faith in his abilities to be able to just take this thing, take it up the sideline. This guy takes a bad angle, and he, all of a sudden he's off and running because he's fast than his defensive end, and now his abilities not only to be able to get the yardage, get upfield, he is not looking to do what? He's not looking to go out of bounds. Mm. He said, I'm going to give you to make nasty as well, and I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and give me four extra yards to help my team move the ball down the field. This dude is smart, he makes good decisions, and he has a physical ability to hurt you, whether you sit back there in coverage or whether or not you try to put some pressure on him. You got to make sure that you try to account for this man. From one dual threat quarterback to another, Isaiah Stanback breaking down Jordan Love. When we come back on Special Edition, the Cowboys have had a quarterback utilize his legs throughout the season. Is Dak Prescott the key to the game and a key to a wild card win? Special Edition, presented by AT&T, was brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. 3.30 Central Time, Cowboys Packers on Sunday afternoon. Back with Isaiah Barry and Nate. 
Time to give the keys to seize everything. Isaiah Stanback, how do they get it done? Don't allow these guys to have a balanced offensive attack, and I think you take care of business. Get after Jordan Love, kill his confidence early, and get it done quick. Mm. Score first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good way to do it. Cowboys pregame live 2 p.m. Central Time from AT&T Stadium on Sunday. Be sure to join all of us. We're going to have a great show. Lots of special guests to get you ready for playoff time. Nate, who wins it? We win it. We win it by 70, by one point. By one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week.